Hi, it's Hopke, and welcome to this screencast looking at our new nested cloners as found in Paro 2 VR version 6 Beta 5 Pro. Right, okay, so what are nested cloners used for? Well, they're used for creating menu systems um, easily and quickly. And, you know, if you've got projects with many hundreds, if not thousands of nodes, these will actually do a lot of the hard work for you. Now, the prerequisite for these menus is that the input images need tags. So here I've got a two-story building, so I've got the tags ground and first. If you've got a project, say, of a small village or a town, you could have tags of, I don't know, garage, shop, cash machine, etc. All right, so that's basically what's going on there. So let's open up the skin editor and dive in. Right. Now you're probably aware that a cloner is used to clone nodes. So the thumbnail menu has a cloner and a node image and you get lots of node images going across the page. It builds it for you. But this is nested cloners. So what we're gonna do is add a cloner and this one is not going to clone nodes. It's gonna become, it's gonna form a table. So we're gonna add the cloner. I'm just gonna give it a title to cat, short for category cloner. All right, I'm gonna position it so it's uh, 10 by 10 pixels in the skin, and I'll give it the size of 155 by 25 pixels. Okay, I'm now gonna grab a text box. We're gonna call the text box cat. So category text, cat text. I'll make that the same size, well almost, so 150 this time round by 20, which it is. And I'm gonna make it a child of the cloner and I'm going to set its position at 0, 0, which will place it top left-hand corner of the parent, as, as, as indicated by the anchor. Okay, cool. Right, so if we preview this as it is now, we will get a text box for every node. So we're cloning the nodes. But I said we don't want to do that. What we want to do, and this is what's new, is we want to turn this into a table. So if you like, the categories of our menu. And the way we do that is if we look under the cloner tab, under its properties, you'll see that we've got source, I can select table. And here I can now use the um, tags. So all the panels with ground can have the title ground floor. And all the panels with the tag first can have the title first floor. Okay, that's pretty cool. If I now just preview this, you'll see that we've got two text boxes now representing the two tags ground and first, but you'll see that the text just says text. I'm not using this title. So that's something new. Again, if we select the text box, if I select the text and delete it, you'll see this little button here is our insert placeholder. If I click that, you'll now see that we've got cloner and cloner title. So that's now going to do exactly that. It's now going to give us the titles of that uh, table. All right. The other thing that we can do here as well, which is quite cool, is if I create a space, we've got another um, placeholder called C node count. And what that's going to do is display exactly how many nodes with the same tag. So here we've got ground floor, we've got four nodes with that tag, and we've got six nodes with the first floor tag. There you go, right, that's pretty cool. Okay, so what I want to do now is, this is the top part of my menu. I want to build the second part that shows the nodes and we click on it. So again, I'm gonna grab a cloner and we're gonna make it roughly the same size, so 155 by 25 pixels. I'm gonna set the width to 10, oh, 10 from the left edge and we'll set the height of say 40, there we go. All right, so that's my cloner. I'm gonna give this a name. We're gonna call this node uh, cloner, there we go. And I'm going to make this a child of the cat text, there we go. Then what I'm gonna do, as we did before, add a text box, give it its size, so 150 by 20, which it is gonna make that a child of the node cloner and we'll call this node text okay and we'll position that zero zero 
Okay then, so if we now see how far we've got, you'll see that we've got our titles, so our categories, ground floor um, and first floor, but we've now got text boxes representing all the nodes, again with the word text. What I want to do is not have the text go, the text boxes go ver horizontal, I want them to go vertical. So if we do that and have a look, you'll see that we've now got four, four panels with the tag um, ground, and six panels with the tag first. Okay, right. So again, what we need to do is get it to display the right name. So again, what we can do is select the text box, delete the text, select the insert placeholder, but this time around, I'm gonna insert the user data title to pick up the title of each panorama. And we preview that, that's exactly what we get. Hall, WC, Kitchen, etc. So that's our menu starting to form. The thing I want to do here is that I don't have a lot of space between each of the text boxes. So I'm going to increase the size of the cloner to 30 pixels. So I've got a bit more gap between the cloner itself and the text box. So when we preview that, we've got a nice gap between each text box. Okay, cool. The other thing I can do is if I select the two text boxes, I can then give them the hand cursor as well. All right, so on mouse over, we get the hand movement. Right, so what I need to do now is make it that the node cloner is hidden, and when we hover over the text, cat, the, the, the category text, the cloner appears. Well, that's easy enough. If I select the cloner, I can deselect visible, then under the visible logic block, I'm gonna give it the action of mouse over parent, when that equals true, the node cloner should also uh, should show should be visible true okay so again if we preview that we can now see that working the only problem we're going to have is that the action in the node cloner or the logic in the load cloner is when the mouse over parent when we move the mouse off the parent it hides okay so what we need to do is bridge this gap and how we do that is i use a container there it is now a container is an element it's not an active element because it comes standard set to permeable but i need it to be active so i'm going to deselect permeable and i'm going to change its size to 150 by 10 all right and then i'm going to make this a child of the node cloner because i want this to fit in between the um, node cloner and the category text all right so i'm going to set this position to zero zero to position it all right and then what i'm going to do is raise it so it's positioned between the two all right so i've now got a bridge okay so if i preview this we can see i can cursor up and down and it's all working nothing's hiding all right, what's left for me to do now is click on the last uh, text box, the node text. I can give it the action of mouse click, open next panorama, hotspot URL, use, let's use the default view, click OK, let's publish the project, and we should now have a working accordion menu. There we go, and we can select whichever rooms we want. Okay, so that's that working. Um, what I could do to tidy this up a bit, as I said, we, we can make the cloner a little bit longer uh, just to give it more of a gap. So if I um, set the position to, say, 60, let's do 60, we've got a bit more gap before the next cloner comes in. So if we have a look, we've got more, and that sort of seems to be more symmetrical. There you go. Um, one of the other things I like to do is if we select both of the text boxes what we can do is under its coloring I can say that when the text box or the node is active when it's true we'll set its white but we just make it a little bit darker there we go so now when I publish out this is actually quite cool effect so it gives you like a breadcrumb effect you can see that the ground floor is active because it's a different color and you can see when I hover over it that the hall is the active element. If I change locations to the kitchen, you'll see that I'm still on the ground floor, but now the kitchen is the active element. If I was to go to the bedroom two on the first floor, 
you can now see if I come to the tour that the first floor is active and bedroom two, if I change nodes to ensuite, you'll see that the ensuite is active as well. So that's actually quite, you know, a very simple thing to do, but you can then track what you're doing and visually easy to see where you are within the tour. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. That's uh, enough to play with for now. Um, I'm gonna bring out another video with a little bit more complicated uh, system. But as you can see, I mean, that's just taken me over 10 minutes to build this. Um, it didn't matter how many nodes I had, it would have taken the same amount of time to build. All right, uh, that's the art with using the nested cloners. It all works with tags. The more tags you have, the more nodes it automatically puts in. So there you go, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Um, this is the, if you like, part one of using nested cloners and look out for part two. Thanks for watching.